A big focus at ATS this year is finding out therapies to reduce corticosteroid dosing in patients with asthma. And this is fantastic, I think, because we have chronically known that oral corticosteroids are harmful, particularly in children. Um, they have side effects that affect their growth, um, side effects with other comorbid conditions, um, such as diabetes and heart disease. And so anything that we can do to minimize the steroid burden in patients with asthma is welcome. Uh, so some of the therapies that we've been focusing on are what we call steroid sparing agents. They help patients not need the high burden of steroids. Um, and when particularly for children, this is critical. Um, so some of the therapies that were discussed at this year's conference focus on mechanisms of disease that can be controlled with other kinds of agents, other immunological agents that might target other pathways so that the dosage of steroids can be avoided. Type 2 asthma inflammation has been the focus of a lot of new therapeutic strategies that we've been developing, particularly because we know that asthma is a heterogeneous disease, and so it's more of an umbrella term that encompasses many different kinds of what we call endotypes of disease, which essentially just means <clears throat> that there are different kinds of asthma that we see and that we can't really have a one-size-fits-all approach. The type 2 type of inflammation that we oftentimes treat is amenable to drugs that modify the immune response in a way that we can target those processes and really address a specific kind of asthma um, with these more advanced drugs. Um, one of the problems that we still face, however, despite having these novel therapies, is understanding which subpopulations of patients will do best when they take them, mainly because there's been such a variable response uh, in their um, populations that include many different kinds of people. So we're still trying to understand um, what are the individual factors, um, for example, if there's um, certain types of race or age related factors that may make somebody more um, uh, successful in terms of their asthma control once they take these drugs. And those factors aren't really well worked out yet. So I think we'll see in the next few years more of a personalized approach to trying to understand which patients will have the most benefit with these targeted therapies.